أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه ووالاه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد all praises due to Allah may Allah's peace and blessings be upon his beloved prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم we continue with our sessions of tafsir al-Quran uh, and we are with Surah An-Nisa, Surah number 4 in the order of the Mus'haf. And this beautiful Surah gathers the ahkam of a relationship of men and women, the ahkam of inheritance, the ahkam of marriage, ahkam of uh, other transactions, along with some of the descriptions of the hypocrites, which we uh, handled or which we covered one of the sections. Uh, talking about them and there are a few other sections coming talking about them as well and some also of the uh, of uh, the ahkam of the people of the book that came in the surah and it will come again at the end toward the end of the surah so to uh, uh, connect um, last times with this time uh, and refresh our memories Allah Azza Jal talked about one of the descriptions of the hypocrites that uh, their affairs is based on their benefit, on their personal benefit. It is not based on what is haram and what is halal, and what Allah says or what Rasulullah sallallahu shows. It is mostly or at all times based on their personal benefit. So when they are invited to Allah and His Rasul to judge among them, they run away. Why? Because they know it's going to be against them. But what if it is for them? They run to, 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 so they go wherever the benefit is. Our aqidah as Muslims, it's complete opposite. It's complete opposite. Our concern is what Allah wants and what Rasulullah wants. That's number one. What I want, if it is that, alhamdulillah. If it is against that, ya yeah, Allah help me to come over my desire. Remember this, huh? this is a golden rule. People wonder, why our children this, why our children that? Because this concept, this very concept is not instilled in them from young age. That's why they say you have to be truthful because it's an honorable thing. You have to be trustworthy because it's an honorable thing. You don't lie because it's an honorable thing. No? Yes? So when we do that, we, we, can, we have to, to say the truth because Islam tells me to do that. I'm a Muslim and this is the contract I sign. This pleases Allah Azza Jal. This pleases Allah Azza Jal. This pleases Allah. It is not pleasing to Allah. When this is instilled from young age, then the child have the standard. Standard is whatever I do is what pleases Allah. Then I need to ask, what does please Allah? You know, so that becomes my compass, my moral compass, my aqidah compass. As an adult, everything before I do it or before I say it. Does it please Allah or not? And if I don't know, what does please Allah in this? I'm intending to do this. How can I please Allah? I'm intending to get married. How, I'm intending to have children. How, I'm intending to start business. I'm intending to go to Hajj. Ramadan is coming. I, it's Salah time. How can I please Allah? Right? So you will do everything right according to the way of Allah. Munafiqeen not like that. Why? Because the contract itself is not there. They say something, but they believe in something else. They say something, but they believe in something else. And that's a form of lying. You say, Munahu kathibul munafiq. Kathibul eh? Munafiq. The lying of the hypocrite. What is the lying of the hypocrite? That the, the statement matches with reality, but it does not, does not match with belief. Okay? If someone says that this neighborhood is good. What do you think about this neighborhood? It's great. And actually all of us sees that this neighborhood is great. So the statement they said is true or not according to everybody's standard. Is it true or not? It's true. But the inside he believes that no, it's not worth it. So that's a lie. Even though they made a statement that all of us accept. If I ask any one of you, yeah, this neighborhood is great. And that person come and say the neighborhood is great. So accept this as the truth, yes? But inside, if you love, this is the worst neighborhood I've been in. I have better than I can be better. So that's a lie. 
إذا جاءك المنافقون قالوا نشهد إنك لرسول الله والله يعلم إنك لرسوله والله يشهد إن المنافقين لكاذبون. They come and said we bear witness that you are رسول الله. Everybody sitting there believe who is that? رسول الله. And Allah says you are رسول الله. But they still lie. Why? Because they don't believe that in their heart. You understand? So that is what makes a munafiq of aqida, kufr yani. So that's what they do. Main characteristic mentioned here in Surah An-Nisa is they go behind their personal benefit according to their hawa, their desire. Whatever it is, they take it. So Allah Azza Jalla said nobody would be a complete believer unless they go to Rasulullah, even if it's against yourself. Even you know you're losing the case. You still have to go by Islam. It's good for you, morally. You know, when we two people, we debate about something. For sure, we, you know, one of us will win, one of us will lose. Right? Yani if you go to any, 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 anywhere, <laughs> if you come to me or you go to a court or you go to a Muslim or not Muslim, whatever it is, we are disputing. Right? Two scenarios. No, there is no third. It is either as there is a draw or one of us win. What is the third option? If we both lose, then who, who wins? If you bo both lose, that means you compromised. Means it's a draw. Means one person taking something, another person taking something. Means you are not a winner 100%, you are not a loser 100%. That's what I mean by a draw. Yani. Someone can take 10 and 90, doesn't matter. 1%, 99, doesn't matter. But you did not win everything, and you did not lose everything. everything. That's one case. The other case is, one wins and one loses. Correct? Whenever you go for a dispute, isn't that the case? Isn't that the case? So now, when I think I have all the right, and I submit to Allah and His Rasul, I, inside my heart, I know that I may win, I may lose, or I may win something. Yeah? So actually a believer, he surrenders to Allah regardless. Sometimes even I am sure I'm going to be losing. But still, I have to stand in front of the judgment. Because today is different from tomorrow. And there are still interactions with people. And maybe I will be the winner one day. I would love also to stand in front of the same judge. Correct? If, if it is mine and winning, I want to take it by ruling. But also I am losing, I have to have the guts, I have to have the courage to stand also and say, you know what? Yes. I'll give, the, I'll give you if it is proven right. You know, I don't believe it is your right. But if the judge say it is, I'm willingly to give it to you. Are you following, sister? I might be having a desire. I'm, I'm debating with you, disputing with you. And you're saying it's my right, it's my right, it's my right. I said, no, 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 no. I said, okay, let's go to the judge. Islamic, Allah and his Rasul, right? Now we know, I say, you know what? Only if the court says it's your right, I will give it. Actually, that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing, by the way. It's a good thing. At least I'm relieved. Right? So that's a mu'min. A believer is the one who is ready to accept the hukum for them or against them. Sometimes actually you go to the judge thinking you're winning, but you end up losing. Sometimes you go in front of the judge, think you are losing, but you're winning. Because you surrender to Allah and His Rasul, regardless, you are looking for what? What are you looking for? Al-Haqq. What are you looking for? That's it. It does not matter the perception you have when you get in. Many people come in front of me and they think that they are like khalas, you know, like I am having the strong case. It doesn't mean you're a winner. Now there is another aspect for that. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when two people came in front of him, disputing about something. One says, it's my right, one says, my right. Rasulullah said, let me warn you first. I am a human being. And one of you might have a stronger argument than the other. So I rule for him, even though it is not his right. Okay? And if I do that, I'm giving him a piece of fire to eat it. Take it or leave it. You see? Because sometimes also, Ruling, I, I, I'm just ruling with what I hear. Like what I hear. That's why Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib goes in front of Shuraih al-Qadi 
with a Jew. You know, Ali ibn Abi Talib said, this is my shield. And the other one said, no, it's mine. He said, no, it's mine. He said, no, it's mine. And he said, Ali, he said, it's mine. Allah knows it's mine. The, the judge knows that Ali ibn Abi Talib will never lie. He knows that. That's a fact. And Ali ibn Abi Talib is Amir al-Mu'min at that time. <laughs> And this is a Jewish person, and by, by, by default, it's like kind of like, I'm not saying he's lower as a human being, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that, you know, if we use our style no. now, there's a the government official and you are nobody, you know, like who's going to win at the end of the day, you know. So he told him, do you have a proof? To Ali ibn Abdullah, he said, no, I don't have a proof. Except my son, witness. He said, your son is testimony for you, is not acceptable in court. Knowing that he's truthful, and this is the grandson of Rasulullah, this is the cousin of Rasulullah, it's Ali ibn Abi Talib, who's, you know, why he would lie over a shield? Go to hellfire for a shield, they only lie. But, you judge with what you have. See that, ju justice of Islam, then he said, okay, you take it. Even though he knows that it's not his. So the Jew said, wallahi, this deen is like amazing deen. And he becomes a Muslim, he said, it is actually his. So justice, is beyond what you want and what I want. Right? If we reach to that, Wallahi, 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 I swear by Allah, many of the disputes in our communities will disappear like that. Just if you look for the haqq. Because one day it will be for you, one day it will be against you. That's for sure, that's a fact. Right? Any dispute between any two people, it will end up like that. It's either you compromise, or one of you takes and one of you loses. But tomorrow you're going to have with the same person or another person. One lose one. And continue like this. You're not going to be a loser all the time. You're not going to be a winner all the time. But what wins? The haqq. The deen of Allah wins. At all time. And that's what me and you and everybody wants to have. That the deen is winning. What is winning at all times? The deen. But I might be losing today and winning tomorrow. But what won the day? Quran and Sunnah. They win the day. Right? Quran and Sunnah established the relationship between us. Quran and Sunnah solved the dispute between us. Quran and Sunnah told us what to do. So Quran and Sunnah are the winners at all times. It doesn't matter about us. I hope this sticks, you know, this point sticks. It's very, very important. Then Allah Azza wa Jal telling us now another aspect of these hypocrites. Another aspect of this hypocrisy. See, the ayat of hypocrisy starts from verse 60. 60. That's why Allah said in the word, the key word in here, Yaz'umuna. Yaz'umuna. In verse 60, third word, Alam tara, Alam tara ila ladina yaz'umuna. Fifth word, Alam tara, don't you see, ila ladina, or don't you look at, Alladina, those who are yaz'umuna, they claim. So Allah said they were, it was not a statement, it was a claim. Za'am. And he thinks or he st make a statement, but it is opposite to the truth. Um, and now, I'm to the end. Then Allah Azza Jal says in verse 66, وَلَوْ أَنَّا كَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَنِ اقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ أَوْخْرُجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ مَا فَعَلُوهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ مِّنْهُمْ وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ فَعَلُوا مَا يُعَظُونَ بِهِ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ أَشَدَ تَثْبِيتًا Ah, why this ayah was revealed? Allah Azza wa Jalla says, If we wrote upon them to kill themselves or to leave their homes, they would have not done it except few. Had they done what they were advised, it would have been better for them and stronger. Thabit ibn Qais ibn Shammas is one of the Sahaba of Rasulullah. Thabit ibn Qais ibn Shammas. One time he is talking with a person from the tribes of the Jews and each one of them started saying how bitter is his religion. Yeah. So Thabit said how Islam is and all that. So the Jew told him Allah told us to kill ourselves and we did. And we obeyed. So, Sabit said, by Allah, if Allah ordered us, we would have done it too. Allah Azza says, 
what is better than killing yourself is to follow the order of Allah right why you focus on the order being to kill yourself Allah order you with other things lesser than that <laughs> and you're not doing you understand so Allah Azza said وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ فَعَلُوا مَا يُعَظُونَ بِهِ يعني why Allah ordered the Jews to kill themselves to repent yeah. from what from uh, worshiping the from a sin yeah. so they were ordered to do something they did not do it hence Allah told them to repent and the way to repent is to kill yourself and you obey it why you did not obey the first at the beginning so it is not something to brag with يعني. you understand <laughs> So it's not something to brag with. Yani what is the, the story here? What is the lesson? Like Imam Shafi'i said, you know, Allah loves people to do tawbah, but Allah loves more those who do not commit the sin. Right? So it is good for you to repent, but you know what is better? It's not to commit the sin that you need to repent from. Because now you are risking. My repentance accepted, not accepted. What is this? What is that? And you have the agony of carrying it in your heart for the rest of your life. Yeah? So, Allah says, yes, you killed yourself. But why you did not obey that first one that you killed yourself because of? <laughs> it would have been much easier, right? Allah tell you to slaughter a cow, but you ended up giving all this gold and وَمَا كَادُوا يَفْعَلُونَ You were about to not fulfill, you know? If you did the easy one, you'll have avoided the big one. So you cannot say, oh, we slaughtered the only yellow cow in the world, da, 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 and we bought it with gold, and brag with that. Actually, you, should have, you could have done much easier. Any cow in the street, slaughter, and yeah, finish the deal, you know? But why are you bragging that you cost, yani, it's like somebody bragging, he said, you know what? I bought that coat for $1,000 one day after the sale when it was 50 bucks. What is bragging here? That you bought a thousand dollar coat? Well, I'm having the same one. Fifty bucks yesterday. <laughs> so who's better actually? I am better because, you know, I'm bragging that was the same coat. Fifty bucks. You're bragging because you spent a thousand dollars on a coat. So, duh. <laughs> it's like that. So it's just like, an, you know. Sometimes people talk about something, but they're missing the main point. A Muslim, always with Allah, very humble, humble, when you read the Quran, when you do the dhikr, subhanallah, Allah will give you the right thing to say. Wallahi, Allah will guide you to the right thing to do. And you'll have peace of mind. We struggle because our desire and our hawa overshadows what Allah wants and what our deen wants. Um... So Allah Azza is saying that most of the people, if they are ordered to, um, to do something or stop doing something, they wouldn't do it because their nature is cheap. Their nature is bad. Right? Yani, if health means a lot to me, if health means a lot to me, then I build all my life around health. Is this something good or something bad? Think before you answer. And you have to tell me why. If health is something good for me, that aspect of my life is so important to me that I build all my life around it. Let me give you some manifestation. So I'll eat right. I'll go to the gym. I will make sure I'm healthy, I'll take the vaccinations, I'll do all of the above, etc, etc. And all my life is built around that. Is this good or bad? Not enough. Huh? Not enough. Not enough? Why? Because there's no application. What do you mean by that? It means you don't use your health to do something, to contribute. So, who agrees? Okay. Who disagree? <laughs> Only if you use it for the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Good. Again, why? Because what is your goal? For what you are using, you are uh, concentrating your life. So health should not be the goal? Yes. That's what you're trying to say? Yes. Okay. 
And why is that? Because uh, uh, if you are a Muslim, you have, our goal has to be to please Allah and Rasul. But am I not pleasing Allah by eating right and doing right and being if healthy? You, if you are, if you're near that to, 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 to taqwa ala ibadatillah. So again, health, my life should not be around my health. Yes. Health should be part of my life which is around something else. Yeah. You see how thinking is? Because some people become, why I chose health? Because this is something that everybody wants. Right? Some people said, you know what, I don't want to be rich. If I use money on. But, I use health because everybody wants to be healthy. Even sick people. Even people in, in stage 4 cancer, knowing that they're going to die, they're still yearning for what? Health. Everyone, does not matter their shape, in shape, out of shape or whatever, they want to be healthy. They don't want to be sick. Right? So, this is a very noble goal, but can you stage your life around it? No. Right? You can actually stage your life around it if health is a tool for something else. That's it. But you cannot have all your life around it. But you pray because you are healthy. What if you are not healthy? You see now? Prayer is not a priority now because health was your priority. What if your exercise comes at the time of a Quranic study. Which one are you going to compromise? Now you see what I'm talking about, right? Okay, if your family and your life is the center of everything around you, so you are saying that I can compromise everything and anything if it clashes with my priority. If money is your priority, same thing. If job is your priority, same thing. If your friend is your priority, same thing. That's why you find people sacrifice their family for their friends. They would rather hang out with their friends more than their own parents. Am I right? Because they established their priority. And they decided the center of their affairs. Center of my affair is myself. My happiness. Myself. Alright? So everybody and anybody, as long as they are serving that, like this is the sun and this is the orbit, and everybody's around me, for me, then I'm fine. Once one trying to get out of the things, it's either you grab them in or you kick them out. Make sense? I'm just giving it to you in a figure way. We all do that, by the way. No exception. Look around you, you will see what I'm saying. Evaluate your family members, you will find the same exact thing. Everyone decide their priority, everyone decide the center. That's why Rasulullah said, None of you will believe unless Allah and His Rasul the, the priority. Until my love is more than any other love. Until your desire is in accordance to what I've been sent with. He's solving the problem for you. Alright, so we sitting in this room, we agree on the same center, we're happy. Because we are all different. We are all have different skills, different talents, different, different things in our life. But once we decide to study, we know the center is to please Allah. We decide to play, center is to please Allah. Each one go to their family, center is to please Allah. You can do it your way, but at the end we, we agree on one thing. And that is a secret in praying jama'ah to remind us daily that you're together you pray together the same line behind one imam you know brainwashing kind of thing so you know but people when they separated the acts of worship from that concept from their daily life we messed up so you believe in Allah Allah is the most important ibadah of Allah this is the center for everything alright worship of Allah Azza wa Jalla Love of Allah comes first. Love between spouses, because of love of Allah. Love to my children, because of love of Allah. So anything and anyone clashes with that, no, step aside. That's why Allah Azza Jal says in the Quran, لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله ورسوله You will never find people who truly believe in Allah and His Rasul. يوادون من حد الله They are nice to those who are fighting against Allah. ولو كانوا, even if they are آباءهم their parents, or abna'ahum, their children, or ikhwanahum, their brothers and sisters, or ashiratahum, their family and tribe. End of story. 
How are you going to reach that level of standing in front of those dear ones when they are opposing Allah and His Rasul that you love more than anything else? Unless you love Allah and His Rasul more than anyone else, you cannot sacrifice this family. Make sense to you? And Allah gave it in a very vivid way. Yani there is no in, more than one interpretation. Yani, you know, this, is, this is clear. You cannot be nice to someone. He says, I am the enemy of Allah and His Rasul. If it becomes easier in you that there is no blood relationship, but with blood relationship you compromise, means you are not believing in Allah and His Rasul good. Yes? Yeah. Because now what happens? Anybody who oppose Allah and His Rasul, hmm, is he my brother, my sister? Well, yeah, he's my enemy. Okay. But your brother wake up in the morning and say, I am the enemy of Allah and His Rasul. What are you going to do? Think? Hesitate? Or you're going to do the same if there are no blood relationship? If you are not going to do the same, means blood relationship is more than Allah and His Rasul. Straightforward. I know it's tough, but that's the package. That is the contract. Once you reach that level, wallahi, many things will become easy on you. Why? Because your family members thinking the same about you. Then you are at peace. Don't you think? You know, me as a husband, I know if my wife does this and she believes if I do this, that's it. So we both kind of neutralize each other. It's like two superpowers have a nuclear bomb. Why they are not using it? No need to, but it has to be there. <laughs> you, you understand the, the point? So whatever I believe, you believe, we're both at peace. That's how Muslim jama'ah survives. But if I'm scared, then that means our faith is no good. If I'm compromising the deen for my family, then that faith is not good. Their faith is no good, and I, have, I don't have the courage to correct it because I'm afraid to lose them. Alright? I know it's hard. That's what the Sahaba succeeded in. They will go battle of Badr. Why battle of Badr you think is very, very important mentioned in the Quran? Why you think that? Because Allah called it Yawm al-Furqan, the day of criterion. A man is holding a sword and in the other camp his father is holding a sword against him. His blood brother is holding sword against him. You see how much they were willing, how much at stake here? It's not easy. It, it's not easy. Like, it's not. You know, when it comes after that, uh, uh, the, the, the son become a Muslim, and he tells his father, in the day of Badr, every time you come on my reach, I avoid you. So I don't kill you. He said, Wallahi, if you came on my reach, I would have not hesitated. Somebody said Muslims become barbaric. But when you think in depth, no, he's telling him, I purchased something better, right? I love you so much, and it will hurt me so much as a father when I'm hurting you, but Allah is more important to me. And if you're going to stand on my way, you're out. And you came here to fight Allah, not to fight me. You are coming here to do what? To kill Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa You come here to say no to Islam. Then you are not my, my son anymore. This is, this is, this is over, you know, th that relationship already done. Why? Because there is a bigger relationship. Yani a Muslim brother and sister who is practicing is closer to you than your own blood relationship who are not practicing. This bypasses that. But if my blood relationship is practicing, they are closer and dearer to me than anybody else who is practicing. Make sense? So if my father and mother and siblings and husband and wife I love them more than anyone in the world. But why? Because they are practicing like any other Muslim. Then they are better than any other Muslim. But if they are not practicing, the least Muslim who is practicing is better and closer and dearer to me and I love them more than I love those. The hubb al-fitri, the fitra love, nobody can debate with you about. Nobody. Yani a Muslim man can marry an un-Muslim woman, right? Christian woman. No, no deny, nobody can deny that he has the fitra love. This is his wife, right? He loves her, he brings her flowers, they intimate together, they eat together, he loves her, he loves her. There's no problem. But if she says something bad about Allah and his Rasul, what would he do? That's the real question. Which one are you going to sacrifice? 
You sacrifice Allah and Rasul for this love, or you sacrifice her for that love. Same thing for the wife. If she's married to a man who's not practicing all of that kind of thing, which one are you willing? So that's, that's actually a very, very, very hard question. So Allah Azza said, Munafiqeen, they want to take the right package and abandon the wrong package. Again, there is a desire. So they show something, but they believe something else. So they go behind the benefit. That's why Munafiqeen are the most dangerous. More dangerous. Why? Because they are, you don't know. You know, if we pray with everybody, we're going to get that privilege. But if they lose against some enemy, we also get privilege. You know? Allah Azza wa says, if somebody, subhanallah, uh, do what Allah ordered them, it would be better. And Allah Azza wa said, it khayran lahum, good for them. Wa ashadda tathbita, make them firmer. Wa idhan la'ataynahum min ladunna ajran azima, would have given them great reward from us. وَلَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ صِرَاطًا مُسْتَقِيمًا Number four, we would have guided them, guided them to the straight path. So whoever obeys Allah, whoever obeys Allah's order, he get those four things. Khair for you, it's always good for you. Two, it makes you firmer in the deen, but stronger, number two. Number three, great reward from Allah. Number four, Allah guide you along the straight path in other affairs. Alright? So you obey, Allah makes something easy for you. You do salah, something else is solved. You do zakah, something else is solved. You do some sadaqah, something else is solved. That's the meaning of the ayah. Hadaynahum sirata mustaqima. Obey Allah, Allah will guide you along the straight path and other things. That's why you will find, you pray, you feel different. You give sadaqah, you feel different. You go to umrah, you feel different. When you go visit your parents back, uh, back home, you feel different, don't you? Because you feel achieved something nice. It makes you feel good. And that's the guidance of Allah Azza wa Jal. Whenever you find yourself doing good things, that means Allah is guiding you to do more good things. Alhamdulillah. Make sajda to Allah and say, Ya Rabbi, thank you. But if somebody keeps blundering, blundering, doing wrong, doing wrong, doing wrong, that means there's something wrong that started all this process. وَلَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ صِرَاطًا مُسْتَقِيمًا This ayah depicts what we studied in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah, why Allah told Bani Israel to kill themselves when they worship that cow. Yeah. Then Musa alayhi salam came and he was very mad, he threw the tablets and all of these kind of things. And then uh, he told, they, they wanted to repent to Allah, he told them, Qtulu anfusakum. You have to kill yourselves, literally. So Allah make it pitch black, dark, and each one hold the knife and they go kill each other. So whoever dies, their repentance, the blood is the expiation. Giving your life willingly, it is the expiation for your sin of shirk. And those who did not die, they were willing to die. Yani Musa alayhi salam started praying to Allah because we saw people are dropping like flies. He said, Ya Allah, Ya Israel will disappear tonight, please. So Allah said, stop, enough. And then, uh, this was how harsh it was. But the Sharia now, Subhanallah, you remember this, and then our Sharia, just say, Ya Rabbi, forgive me. That's it. Still, many people don't do it, right? <laughs> you are ordered with less, but we don't do it. Now, um, Subhanallah. You know what is the literal meaning of the word Ta'a? Ta'a means obedience. Ta'a means obedience. The definition of ta'a, hamlu nafsi ala ma takrah. Pushing yourself to what yourself does not desire. <laughs> Pushing yourself to do what your soul does not desire. So the obedience is more manifested the things that against your nature. Like tahajjud is again is the nature of resting. Zakah is again is the nature of loving money. Fasting is again is the nature of eating. Hajj is again is the nature of peace of mind. <laughs> you know? Quran is again is the nature of listening to something nice and fun. Right? And so on and so on. Prayer is again is the nature of running around and not to be controlled. Now we cannot talk, we cannot this, we cannot that, you have to do only this. It's again is your nature. You, you don't want to be confined and something confine you. 
And when you submit to that, you are doing what? Ta'ah. So now we understand the concept of ta'ah is to train yourself to do things against the human nature. The more you do that, the more ta'ah you become. The more person you become. Ta'ah, also when you make the iron, cast iron, you know, the iron, like you form, like, you know, put it in the heat, so it kind of like, against the, against its form. The form is like a rod. Now you wanted to bring that rod arch, arch right? So it's again, that's one, once you bring it to this level, that means it, you, you make shapes out of it. <laughs> that's ta'a. So acts of ta'a means the acts that normally human beings don't want to do. Like if you come to a person and tell him, you are going to do up and down and all of this five times a day. And you have to do this, that. And you have to do this. Why should I do this? Right? So again, it's the nature of human being. But it's a blessing of Allah that we as Muslims are committed to do that. So the more of ta'a, it's the better we are. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa told us that Jannah is surrounded by things that people dislike and hellfire is surrounded by things that people are lustful for. Huffat al-Jannatu bil-Makarih wa huffat al-Naru bil-Shahawat. The hellfire is surrounded by lusts and the Jannah is surrounded by the things that displeases you. You know, people want to drink, people want to have fun, people want to disobey. I mean, people want to do things without limitations. Nobody can find them, nobody judges them, nobody tells them what to do. I want to do whatever I want to do at any time, any ways, anywhere. Right? And that leads to hellfire expressway. If that becomes your main theme of, of your life. But if your main the theme of your life is to do challenges and all that, you'll find most of the successful people, that's the theme that they chose. Why they become very rich? They will read this many books every week. They will exercise this. They will wake up 4 o'clock in the morning, right? They will do this. They will not see the computer. They have advisors. They, do, they, 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 they. they sacrifice many things that other people think enjoyment for them to succeed, right? But me and you looking at them like, I want what they have without doing what they did. See? Everybody sees someone driving with... Uh, a, a, few cars around them and bodyguards and all that said, man, I wish I am like that. All right, so do what they did. But why you are not wishing for the process? You're wishing for the product. That sometimes why it is not right to give somebody poor handout. You know that? Sometimes it's not right. Why? Because you know they are not taking it to become better. They are taking it and become dependent. Yes. Right? They want what you have, but they don't want to do what you did. Okay? They don't want to do it. They just feel entitled. That I am poor, I need all these rich people to help me. Why? Just because they are rich and you are poor? If this is your concept, that's bad. It's really, really, really bad. And that is why people just take welfare or depend on it. Because they want to do that. They want to stay there. Yeah. Right? They don't want to take it as a transitional help until I become better. It is not good for my dignity to continue doing it. Alright? So, Mu'min believes like that. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. And Allah mentioned two things. One, yourself... Killing yourself, that's very hard because our life is very dear to us. And our houses, very dear to us also. Somebody tells you, leave your family, leave everybody and go for the sake of Allah, it becomes very hard. Right? That's why when people traveling, they kind of hard for them to leave their family behind. Especially if they are attached to them and they love them, children and all that, right? So, it would be very, very hard if Allah said, go for jihad and you're not going to get killed. Or leave your homes and travel for the sake of Allah, it's very hard. So those two things are dear to you, yourself and your family, your house, the one that you built, the one you invested in, the one, it's very hard for you to give up. Yeah. That's why those two things are chosen yani, in this ayah. Somebody would say, why children not mentioned, why this, word, why that, right? So yourself and your li living conditions, including your family and everybody, of course. Then Allah Azza Jal says, but the believers are not like that. 
ومن يطع الله والرسول ويفر اوبيز الله نزل رسول ينو يا ايها الذين امنوا اطيعوا الله واطيعوا الرسول you know in in verse 59 now Allah says what's going to happen there Allah ordered here Allah said whoever submit to the order you see the relationship between the two ayahs اطيعوا الله اطيعوا الرسول ولا امنوا منكم Allah give instruction ayah 59 is the instruction I'll read it again all you who believe obey Allah and obey his Rasul and those of authority among you should you have any dispute in anything bring it back to Allah and his Rasul if you truly believe in Allah and his after this is good and this is the best uh, of endings right that's the order then Allah said some people will not follow the order from verse 60 to 65 talking about those right and f and continue to actually 68 so 59 is the order from 60 to 78 Allah talk about those who did not take that order seriously all right now from verse uh, 69 and 70 Allah says those who followed that order two ayahs only <laughs> because a person who follows Allah and his Rasul does not hesitate we don't need to describe much because they already decided so all their life will be around it you get the idea right but the other ones more details because the battle is manifested in different ways but haq is one and all what will come as manifestation will always look nice. Like if someone wanted to be honest all the time, they decided that already. Okay? So it will manifest in every step of the way. Right? Everyone meets with them during the day from the time they wake up until the time sleep. Honest, 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 at work, honest, the pump in the gas station, honest, 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 honest. Because they already decided to be what? Honest. honest. And they don't actually look for people's praise. But every action people recognize. Why? Because they have a faith, belief, conviction. But if they say, you know what? Today, I really to get the promotion. Okay? So someone wants to see me as honest. I'll be honest. Someone wants to see me as this. I'll be honest. So everybody now have a different idea about you. Why? Because your goal is not a concept. Your goal is benefit. And what is benefit from you is not benefit from me. But honesty, everybody likes. <laughs> you, you get the idea, right? You are a person who respect everybody as a human being. You decided that. It's going to manifest in everybody. While you are driving, young, old, sick, healthy, rich, poor, man, woman, everybody. Even those who disagree with you, you respect them as a human being. And they see it from their side, but everybody seeing the same thing. That person is respecting me. At the end of the day, if you gather 1,000 people, all of them different. None of them know each other. They don't know each other. But all of them had an encounter with you. If you ask them, what is the main characteristic of this person? They say he is respectful. Haq is one. Right? But if I decide my maslaha, I smile at this one and I frown at this one. I kick this one and I kiss uh, for this one. <laughs> you know? So at the end, if you bring all of them and say, describe this guy, what are you going to say? Multicolor. <laughs> <laughs> Sahih? Yes. Right? Yani if you, they did not see each other, but he said, what do you think about this guy? One will say, liar. One will say, truthful. One will say, honest. One will say, dishonest. One will say, I had a great experience. I had a bad experience. Correct? Yes, yes. Why? Because, because battle. Yes. But battle manifests in different formats right because battle and actually they cancel each other that means this person is worthless if you say he's truthful and i'm saying he's not truthful and both of us are right means this guy's a hypocrite Halas. right neither will trust him anymore even he told you the truth even he benefited you even he's your servant you don't trust him anymore because someone else telling you the complete opposite so which one is right here? Means this guy is working for his own benefit. How can I trust him? But if all of them say, truth, 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 ah, this guy will not, doesn't lie. Even I'm his enemy, doesn't lie. Hmm, I respect him. So now, I know he doesn't lie. Should I trust him or not? Yes, yes. even my enemy. If, if that one says a word, I think about it. Oh, it cannot be a lie. <laughs> this guy doesn't lie. I'm sorry, he doesn't lie. You have to watch.
Now you understand why we believe in Allah and His Rasul? Is the center of everything. Because if it is not, then we have a big problem. So don't put me, 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 I, I, I. Don't do that. Even Rasulullah Sallallahu told, prohibited us when, when you knock on the door and somebody say who, don't say me. Don't. <laughs> say your name. Jabir ibn Abdullah, great sahabi, he knocked on Rasulullah And he says, who? He says, Ana. Rasulullah said, Ana, Ana. I don't have any friend called Ana. I don't, I don't know anybody by the name of Ana. He said, Jabir, ya Rasulullah. Then he opened the door for him. He's teaching us, you're not the center of the world. The less you think about yourself, wallahi, the happier you'll be. You know why? You know why? If my concern every Tuesday is your benefit and your happiness, guess what? No, guess what? All of you, 15, 20 of you, your concern is my happiness too. So I'm getting my happiness down times 20. So who's actually benefiting more? Me as an individual. Right? And it doesn't take much. So when I am not the center of the affair, I end up actually being the center of attention. You see? Why? Because everyone sees me caring about them. What they do in return? Care about me. So if I'm actually smart, I should care about more people. <laughs> If I'm actually smart, I should not think about what I want from you, but I should think about what each one of you want from me. And alhamdulillah that all of you want the same thing. It's not like each one of you have like a different need or something. No, you want the same thing. So if I do the best in that, then actually I get your attention in many different other things. So who's the winner? Me. But if I think I'm the most important person in here, so I already build a barrier. You only look at me as someone whom I want to learn this lesson from and then it cuts off the minute you walk out. So I lost actually more than I benefited. It's very simple logic, but sometimes we don't. Because for you when you came here, Allah is more important than this guy. And for when you enter, Allah is more important than all of this. So actually once we both sign that contract, we will benefit each other to the best. Okay? But if each one becomes the center of the affair, no good. You might have some benefit, but not a lot. So, وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ That's the second group now, in two eyes only. Whoever obeys Allah and His Rasul, فَأُولَٰئِكْ Those surely will be مَعَ الَّذِينَ Will be with those who are أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Wow! Allah said there is certain categories that Allah established or bestowed His favors upon them. Do you want to be with them or not? Now, if you want to be healthy, whom you want to be surrounding you? People who are eating like chips and burgers and junk food and stuff? Or people who are healthy? Okay, you want knowledge. You want to be surrounded by people who have knowledge. You want to go to the masjid. You want to be surrounded by the people who want to help you and go to the masjid, and so on, and so on, and so on, right? You want to have fun, you surround yourself by people who will help you to have fun. So now, where do you want to be in Yawm Al-Qiyamah? In Jannah, right? The highest place in Jannah, right? Who are residing there? Siddiqeen, Shuhada, Salihin, the prophets, martyrs, the pious and righteous. Allah said, you want to do that? Obey Allah and His Rasul. So that is the center of your affair. Ibadah, worship, obeying Allah and His Rasul, and mostly it's going to be against your desire. Is that clear? That's why I tell the children, yeah, it's against your desire to wake up in the morning and do wudu and do salah, and then, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I can just wash my face, brush my teeth, and put my clothes and go to school, right? Mm -hmm. It's much easier, isn't it? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. But what is harder is to do an extra task or two. And that extra task is raising your feet to wash. That sometimes it becomes very heavy, by the way. Sometimes in the morning you don't want to touch your face with water, actually. <laughs> but you got to do it, right? It's against your desire. So ta'a is that. The more ta'a is that. Ta'a ta is to do things against default. Like any teenage kid, when they wake up in the morning, do they want to go to school? No. no. Do they want to brush their teeth? 
No. Do they want to be clean? No. Do they want to take a shower? No. Do they want to make their bed? No. Do they want to put any effort in anything in the world? No. Do they want everybody to serve them? Yes. Do they want to sleep forever? Yes. You see, this is, this is the whole idea. If you leave them with that, where it's going to end? No health, malnutrition, right? They'll be messed up, they'll go to a mental hospital or commit suicide at the end. Uh, yeah, but if you ignore it and let them do what they want, that's the end result. If you tell them, no, 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 this is the list of what you're going to do. And they obey it. Now, it is hard for them, they hate it. But later, yeah, thank you, Dad. Thank you, Mom. Am I right? So same thing with the deen of Allah Azza wa You can choose to do whatever you like, but where it's going to end? Like that teenager. But you do the things which is against people's desire and your own, you'll end one day and say, Alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana lihada. Pray be to, praise be to Allah, the one who guided us to this. Without him, we wouldn't have, have been guided. Then you'll appreciate that. May Allah make us among those. So whoever obeys Allah and his Rasul will be with who? The highest degree people. With those whom Allah bestowed his favor upon. You can be with the degree of the prophets, even you are not a prophet, but you will be in the degree of the prophets. Wow. والصديقين. Siddiq is different from Sadiq. Sadiq is the person who said the truth, but Siddiq is the person who is truthful. You know? Sadiq is the act of saying the truth. So I have to speak to label me Sadiq or Kathib. I have to open my mouth. But if I get the title Siddiq, even I'm sitting like this. I'm identified as what? You get it? If I open my mouth, you know, once I open my mouth, nothing will come except Siddiq. That's called Siddiq now. You understand the difference? Sadiq. تقول هذا رجل صادق. صدق. صدقت. يعني what you just said now is Truth. I don't know how it's going to happen next time. Right? I don't know what's going to happen in the next situation. But I said, Siddiq. Once he entered the door, we said what? Siddiq. This is Siddiq. Yusuf ayyuha? Siddiq. Means you never lied to us. You are a Siddiq. He have not spoken yet. He's asking him a question. Now you understand? You are, those are high level with the prophets also in Jannah. You're going to be with them if you obey Allah and His Rasul. Was-shuhada' Those who give their lives for the Allah's sake, subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are in the highest degree of Jannah. You can be with them by obeying Allah and His Rasul. والصالحين, those who do all amal salih their life. Pious righteous deed. Rafiqa. Those are the best of companions to be with. Don't you think so? Of course. There is a hint here. Subtle hint. If you want to be with those in Jannah, it's through what? Obeying Allah and His Rasul. How about if those are in life also? How about the pious and the righteous and the people who give everything for the sake of Allah walking around you? If you want to be with them in Jannah, why can't you be with them here? You see the question here? I told you there is a subtle meaning. Can I be with the prophets here? Yeah, you follow their order. Sunnah with Rasulullah. How far are you from the Sunnah? Yeah, you want to be with Rasulullah in Jannah. But not in dunya. Yeah, you have to obey him and love him too. You have to obey all their teachings. But there are some pious, righteous people in the corner in our city. And I know that Allah says pious, righteous people will go where? Jannah. You obey Allah and his Rasul. You're going to be with them in Jannah. I know I'm going to be with these people in Jannah. But they are here now. <laughs> Actually be with them while obeying Allah and his Rasul. It's much better. Because you know, people who love someone for Allah's sake, Allah resurrects them together. So not only when you get to Jannah, you find them there and you sit with them. No, you are resurrected together. Because you know what? I was with them also. You know, there is a beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah azza wa jal send his angels to see the majlis like this. May Allah make this one like that. Majlis of knowledge like this. Then... The angels attend and then they go to Allah. Allah asks them, كَيْفَ وَجَدْتُمْ عِبَادِي Have you found my servants? And he knows subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said, Ya Allah, 
they are worshiping you they are studying and they are praising you and they are asking you and they are doing good he said what do they want from me and he knows he said ya allah they want jannah allah said have they seen it they said ya allah no they haven't seen it allah said what if they have seen it he said ya allah they would have been more eager to run behind it he said what they, are they afraid of ya allah they are afraid of your hell he said they have they seen it Allah, they have not seen it. He said, okay, what if they seen it? He said, Allah, they will be more scared of it. Right? In the beginning, he said, they, Allah, they want your pleasure. Have they seen me? No, what if they see me? They will be, Allah, I want me more. Then Allah Azza says, I make you witness, all my angels, that I forgive all of them. You know, for that. Then one of the angels said, but Ya Allah, there was that one person. He's not from them. He just came because of an affair. He needed to talk to someone or he just spent some time, but he was sitting there, but he's not from them. He said, I forgive him too. They are the people that their companions will also benefit. Now you understand what I'm trying to say here? You want to be with the pious in Jannah, be with them here. You want to be with the Prophet in Jannah, love them here. You want to be with Rasulullah in Jannah, follow his Sunnah here. And don't wait there. يعني, you want to be with them? So, Imam Shafi'i used to say, أُحِبُّ الصَّالِحِينَ وَلَسْتُ مِنْهُمْ يعني, I love the pious people, even I consider myself not among them. See how humble he was? He was saying, I love the pious people. I like to stick around with them. I like to follow them. Subhanallah. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, well, he's a great Imam. Huh? When Imam Shafi'i come riding his mule, Imam Ahmed holds the rope. You know? And he holds the stirrup for him to ride. And they tell him, you are who you are and you are still acting like a young student in front of Shafi. He said, you will not learn knowledge unless you hold his mule. You have to bring yourself down to be up. You want to be like him, you have to be with him. Okay, so you cannot just claim something without experiencing it. And you cannot experience it without learning it from professionals. Right? And have people who have experience. People who know how to help you. So, as I said, those who want to live the deviated life, they will find many people helping them. Those who want to live a straight life, they will find few people helping them. But stick with those who will benefit you. This is fadl from Allah. That you are with these people in Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Allah suffice of all the knowledge. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, Man ahabba qawman hushara ma'ahum. Whoever loves a group of people, he will be resurrected with them. So our kids, they love hip-hop and run and run. You're going to be resurrected with these people. Be careful. You love the jama'ah and all that, you'll be resurrected. You love... That's why I always scream at the people in the community. Please establish some premise or something that... We as a family become together. Our kids come together. They know each other. They learn from each other. They marry from each other. It's not a joke anymore. And it's not like a, some affair. It's not. It, it is a priority now. <laughs> you know, we need really to work together. So we become resurrected together in goodness. Right? But our kids are running here and there and there and there and there. And, there and, there and 100 years from now, it's too much. Scattered. So it is time to really love those whom you want to be resurrected with. Make this as a golden rule. I want to love those whom I want to be resurrected with. So if you love someone, ask yourself, is this person helping me to reach to Allah? Is this someone I want to stand in front of Allah with? Is this group is someone I want to stand in front of Allah with? So have your love for Allah and His Rasul and whoever loves Allah and His Rasul. Is that clear? It saves you from all the trouble. All other relationships is is, is secondary. Secondary. My neighbor, I respect my neighbor. But he does not love Allah and his Rasul, so my love is saved. But I can deal with them like a, in an organic manner, in a way that default, you know. And so on. وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ عَلِيمًا We finish inshallah Rabbil Alameen at this point because the next one is all about fighting in the cause of Allah. And those ayat are related to each other all the way 
until the uh, section uh, until all this section uh, like 83 or um, 84 until 84 this will be connected together and of course the, the whole surah is connected together but you know like this this is a whole section starting from the ayat of be uh, prepared and when you go fight for the cause of Allah you have to be together and how the hypocrite react to that order as well may Allah make us among the believers may Allah save us from hypocrisy and hypocrites may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our intentions if you have any questions